Mental health billing isn't easy. If it was, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. As a behavioral health entity, your main goal isn't to collect the money from your patients. It's to help treat them. Unfortunately, though, many behavioral health organizations have no choice but to spend countless hours on the billing side of things because there's so much involved. At the end of the day, billing is what keeps your doors open as a behavioral health organization, though. Now, it's possible why so many mental health practices and facilities find billing so difficult isn't because it's impossible, but because they haven't streamlined their processes. Hi everyone, I'm Matt from eTactics, and today I'm going to walk through a streamlined, simple eight steps towards mental health billing. Before we get started though, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button below. While you're down there, hit that alert bell icon next to it as well, so when we post new helpful content, you get notified. The first step in the mental health billing process is information collection. You can't bill for your services without collecting information from your clients. Now that might sound like an obvious statement, but it's a little bit trickier than it seems. What information do you need to collect from your mental health clients for billing purposes though? You need to be able to provide the following information on your end. Provider tax ID, employment identification number or social security number, individual provider NPI, organizational group NPI, provider license and address. There are only four pieces of patient demographic information you need at a minimum for billing purposes. Full legal name, date of birth, address and gender. Beyond demographic information, you gather the following patient insurance information. Card member or subscriber ID, group number, authorization number, claims address, and mental health slash behavioral health provider phone number, the one for eligibility. The second step is information verification and eligibility. Gathering the information from your clients is only the first step. It's also your responsibility to ensure that the information is accurate, up-to-date, and eligible. In a streamlined mental health organization, this process kicks off the moment the patient walks through the doors for their visit and continues through their appointment. This is a key step in the process. Verifying eligibility early helps stop denials from eligibility months before you would actually receive them. You can call the patient's provider to verify eligibility, but that takes time. Instead, there are many systems that can check eligibility on your behalf in a more efficient manner than making phone calls yourself. This technology could be supplied by your EHR, clearinghouse, or a different third party. Third is CPT code recording. CPT codes are essential to billing. Without them, the payer wouldn't be able to understand what happened during your client's visit. Recording them must happen right after the appointment occurs. The four most common CPT codes are 90791, which is exclusive to the first appointment held with a client, 90832 for a 16 to 37 minute session, 90834 for a 38 to 52 minute session, and 90837 for a 53 minute or longer session. Although it seems straightforward, it's worth mentioning that you bill for the first appointment first, then refer to the other codes based on session length. Fourth is claim submission. There are many different techniques you could use to submit your claims, but the best option is a total package claim submission portal and clearinghouse provider. These clearinghouses, like ours, can automatically accomplish multiple claim submission process alternatives for every unique scenario for claim submission. That way, if a client comes through with a payer that only accepts paper claim submissions still, you let the clearinghouse know and it will automatically generate and mail a CMS 1500 or UB04 form. Oh, and it also integrates with your PM or EHR system and vice versa. Step five, clearinghouse rejections. Before you officially send your claims to your client's payers, your clearinghouse should help you out via scrubbing and rejections. Now, believe it or not, your clearinghouse's sole purpose is to have your back when it comes to mental health billing. That means it should be able to alert you of errors you make during the claim submission process and correct the same automatically. This step happens simultaneously with step four, but it needs to be mentioned because it's another added benefit of choosing the total package claim submission portal and clearinghouse provider. Sixth, claims processing and feedback. All right, by this step, you've submitted a client claim. Congratulations, let's break out the champagne and celebrate because we got through the hard part, right? Not so much. Unfortunately, now we need to figure out what happened to the claim and whether or not the payer actually accepted it. All right, so we're back in our PM or EHR system that's integrated with the best clearinghouse known to man, which you realize that's probably ours by now. Now you use this tool every day, so why not make it a habit to check the claim status section 
that's included with and provided by your clearinghouse. It's already integrated with practically every payer that exists in the mental health billing world, so it can pull up the claim status for everything you've submitted through it. Seventh, recording and reviewing denials. The claims that come back to you with a denied status are particularly important. Now, if the average denial rate for submitted claims is more than 11%, you should expect to lose that much revenue. You don't want to write off that much to your bottom line, though. However, denials aren't a dead end. You can rework them and submit them for an appeal. Your clearinghouse should also keep a record of your denials and place them within work queues to kick off appeals processes. Eighth, reworking, resubmission, and appeal. You did it. You made it to the final part of the mental health billing process. The last step in the mental health billing process I have for you is to rework your denials and submit them for an appeal. If your client's claims get denied, don't take it personally. I have to admit that health insurance organizations don't make this entire process very easy, but they have their rules. The truth is that 86% of denials are avoidable, while 24% aren't recoverable. So if you rework them, you'll be able to recover more revenue that's otherwise written off. Your clearinghouse should be able to help with the denial of recovery process by explaining what happened, pointing out errors, and generating appeals letters or resubmitting corrections to payers. Okay, I went through a lot during this video, but after all of this, the biggest takeaway is that you need to choose the right clearinghouse. Since a clearinghouse acts as a middleman between you and insurance organizations, they're an essential piece of the mental health billing puzzle. Now, they should have features included within them that exist to help you, such as rejections, claim scrubbing, and denial management. Those features are industry standards at this point, to be honest with you, so it shouldn't be that hard to find the right clearinghouse. If you'd like to learn more about mental health billing and choosing the ideal clearinghouse, though, reach out to eTactics. And you already made it this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below. Well, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to our YouTube channel.